Hello my tarot friends, Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and welcome of course if it's your first time visiting, I appreciate you as always, I hope you had a happy new year, merry Christmas, happy holidays, uh, whatever you celebrate, I apologize I haven't you know, really had the time to make uh, all the videos I wanted to make, We've just been very busy with work and the holidays and so forth, and I've even had COVID the last you know, six days, so it's just been a very, very crazy, but hopefully with the holidays behind us, uh, you know, and I have some weekends free, I'll be able to make the videos I want to make um, because I have a whole backlog of decks and books that I really want to show you and talk about. Um, the one big kind of announcement I have for you is that um, on the 15th, which is a Sunday, I believe, the interviewing Christoph Ponset, who, um, you know, he's made a documentary that I really am interested in uh, about the link between Italian Renaissance art uh, and the Tower de Marseille, uh, but he's an illustrious kind of researcher of the Tower de Marseille. He collaborated with Yves Renaud. Um, you know, he produced a really beautiful Convert deck that everybody loves, um, which is now out of print. Um, and he's just written a lot of papers and stuff. He's very involved and very well connected in the tarot uh, history realm. And so it's going to be interesting to talk to him. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. I will keep you posted with uh, all the details of that. So the decks I want to show you today have been sent to me uh, for review by Llewellyn. Llewellyn is the one company I um, uh, am happy to accept things from because I'm a big fan of their books, number one. Like, I buy a lot of their books. Uh, you know, Jack Chanick, uh, Sasha Graham, even Rachel Pollock published uh, Tarotism through through um, them. I mean, so, so many great books are published. Um, through Llewellyn and and they're always very easy to digest it's just like just enough you know and it's always interesting and good quality good content very smart people uh they get you know to write books and, and I just really like that about them and I'm also a big fan of Los Scarabeo's decks decks like these I have in front of me um you know we're a lot of times we focus on like all these kind of indie or like boutique type uh tarot shops you know but it's nice to come across a mass market that is really exciting. First deck I want to show you is the uh, Knights Templar deck. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, it's a really impressive deck. The art is really beautiful. Um, basic, and it's been beat up because I've been sort of carrying it in my bag for a while. Um, and um, I really do like this. I, I need to kind of set some time aside to familiarize myself with the characters on the deck. Um, well, first off, you know, like typical Los Carabeo, um, cardstock, which is nice, you know, it's like very shuffleable. Um, they feel really, they slide really well, you know, it feels the same as they always do. Um, Los Carabeo cardstock's not bad, you know, um, it's a little on the thin side, but so the people that like it, like it because, you know, most of them are like ripple shufflers and so forth. Um, but, uh, this is a borderless deck. These are the backs here, which I really like. Um, and the art style is just really impressive to me. Um, very, very high quality uh, artwork. Um, and it's what I like about this deck too is that, you know, it's not um, like just blanket RWS meanings, you know. Like the full here, if you look at it, it's, it's like goes back to kind of the old uh, meanings, which is like madness and so forth um see what it says the fool under the scorching sun a templar has lost his mind and wanders aimlessly in the desert with his dog desert madness erases the madness of war and deceptive mirage that violence can provide solutions so it's pretty uh pretty cool and interesting but i really like the uh, artwork you know okay so now um hughes de pons represents the aleph beginning of the path of the tarot uh as that of the templars so uh i don't know much about this figure like i'm very interested in templar history they were like the first bankers uh they protected travelers from europe to um you know uh, the holy land the so-called quote-unquote holy land uh so there's an interesting history there uh you know that i really would like to to look into, you know, and being a, a, a Freemason as well, it's it's very interesting. Uh, the Templars were influenced by the Gospel of John and followed the mystical indications on Mariology provided by Bernard of Clairvaux and Hildegard of Bingen. 
The high priestess removes the veil. So this is the high priestess. It's very interesting. It's very uh, like a Mary type image, you know, with her stepping on the snake and the, that beautiful uh, blue color, blue and white. It's just very beautiful. And you still have the, the pillars there, Boaz and Joaquin, um, which is very Masonic, you know. Um, but this is just very beautiful. I love this art. I mean, it's really kind of a, like a elegant style of art. The Empress represents the Sophia of the Gnostics, the female soul, the Aeon, that struggles to save the world. In her hand, she bears the Rosicrucian symbol. Yeah, which is the rose. Um, and the word came into the world in an idol of peace and nature. I mean, look, it's so beautiful. Such a beautiful image. And you have a woman breastfeeding her child, uh, which I don't know if I have ever seen that before on an empress, but I like it. Um, I'm sure it's happened before, but not that I can think of. Okay, the emperor um, is, let's look at the emperor here. Philip IV of France, known as Philip the Fair. It was he who decreed the final demise of the Templars so as to grow rich on their treasure. He is the king par excellence, a holder of absolute power, a man who thinks only of material things and not spirituality. So, yeah, you have the guy. That's the famous story of the Templars being crushed uh, on Friday the 13th. Philip the Fair um, collaborated or cons could, he basically, I think the story goes that he swayed the Pope or coerced the Pope uh, into abolishing the Knights Templar. And then they raided them all. They tracked them all down and killed them uh, on or arrested them on uh, Friday the 13th. So this, he's very much a tyrant, you know? So that's interesting with, with the emperor, you know, um, he, he's a, he's a tyrant, a known tyrant to the, to the Templars. So, um, very cool. And of course the beautiful art style, uh, the Hierophant Pope Urban II launched the crusades in 1095. The ensuing ward would culminate with the fall in 1271 of the crack day Chevaliers. Templar fortress in Syria. The attempt to achieve the celestial city in Jerusalem was combining armies with the power of prayer. Um, card six here we have the lovers. Sometimes you have to choose whether you stay listening to your heart or to go. Many crusaders had to leave their families to go and liberate the holy uh, sepulchre, the eternal conflict between sacred love and profane love. And really beautiful uh, image there. The angel. I mean, this is very religious art, but again, it's kind of there's like a bit of satire behind. I don't know if satire would be the right word, but it's tongue in cheek a bit. It's not not everything is as it seems, you know. Um, the chariot. Abraxas is the guardian in charge of the ladder of Gnostic purification. The symbolic figure of the Abraxas derives drives the chariot. The horses represent the four elements because if you drive with the strength of intellect, the road will present no obstacles. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I think that's a pretty good little taste of everything. You might read a few of them all. The strength, very beautiful. Beautiful image of the line there. Um, who is that on nine? The hermit, the fifth crusader. St. Francis went to Egypt to try and convert the infidels. He did not succeed. The power of the faith encourages us to enter the most inaccessible places, but our message is not always accepted. And the wheel, Bernard of Clairvaux, was writing the rules of the temple. Yeah. I mean, that's really, you know, the all-seeing eye. Very, very beautiful image. Um, an angel guards the seven gates that regulate the climb leading to redemption. The angel will weigh our hearts, and the path will only be revealed to us uh, if our hearts are pure. Okay. Very Egyptian, too, you know, if you think about Mayot weighing the heart and the feather. Okay. Um, the hangman Templars undergoing torture at the hands of Philip the Fair's henchmen. Wow. That's a really intense death card. Death rooms the battlefield. It bears the banner of Jolly Roger, which later became famous with piracy, but first appeared with Templars and was used for the first time by Roger de Fleur in 1291. 
that's something I had no idea about, you know, the Jolly Roger uh, history with the Templars. I mean, really cool. You know, temperance. Uh, a very cool devil. Devil in the guise of Baphomet holds the world in its clutches. The devil is none other than a fallen angel. The way towards redemption is implicitly portrayed in the figure of its head symbolizing a lily. Very intense looking tower. And the star. Secret knowledge is acquired through constant study. The star of hermetic tradition shines in the sky while the Templar monk mixes the waters in the vase. Um. Oh, this is cool. Okay, the sun from a vision of Hildegard of Bingen. The unicorn, a symbol of purity, bears a child's sun, which begins its tour under the imperturbable gaze of God while the astronomical sun is at its zenith. We have judgment here. Jacques de Molay and Geoffrey de Charnay burn at the stake. March 18th, 13, 14. And then the world. Wow. I mean, that's so pretty. The, this art style is amazing. It really is. I mean, it all looks painted to me. I'm sure there's some digital stuff in here, but it looks very, very beautiful. So, it reminds me a bit of... Um, the Jungian tarot, just a tad, like some of the characters and things, um, same kind of style. But anyway, Ace of Cups. I mean, it's all very religious imagery. So you have the Lamb of God, Templar flag in the cup. That's the, obviously uh, more than likely it's the uh, Grail. Yeah, okay, yeah, the Grail that gives life. And so this is another thing that's interesting too, because the Grail lore with the Knights Templar and the link with the Arthurian um, mythos. You know, it's something that just intrigues me. But uh, very beautiful. Three of Cups. You know, this is all pretty Rider Waite Smith. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, he's refusing the cup. There on the four. Oh, very, very pretty. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is so pretty. Love that. Cups. Let me see what that says. So set out in search of new challenges, leaving one's old life behind. He's walking towards a ship. Cups. Oh, wow. Look at that. I mean, this is such a cool deck. Court of cards under the sign of the Virgin, the Queen with the head of gold and white robes symbolizes virtue and power of symbols. And so that's like the Marian kind of symbol. He has like some sort of mask on. Let's see what that says there. The leper king of Jerusalem, Baldwin the Fourth, beneath the banner of the city. Dedication to the cause despite his physical difficulties. And yeah, he has like the mask on covering up his leprosy. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to flip through these pretty quickly. The eclipse of the sun. Well, it's something else. I haven't. Uh, December 1098, the capture of Jerusalem. The solar eclipse symbolizes the upheaval of the elements. Okay, so there, there must be, I remember kind of briefly hearing about that. Um, there was some sort of uh, eclipse that took place after a battle. Um, and everybody was kind of took it as like an omen. You know, pretty cool. Templar giving things. Here we have a farmer. On the Templars' farms, work and fair remuneration. In the Holy Land, the discover of a discovery of a citrus garden, the beauty of nature. Nine of Coins. Okay. 
Beautiful. Oh. oh, well, look at that, Four of Wands. I mean, that's really, really cool. I love this art style, you know. And if you're intru if you're familiar with Rider-Waite-Smith, I mean, the pips seem to really be based on the Rider-Waite-Smith, more, more so than the Trumps, I think. Um, it's a little more subtle in the Trumps. Um, that's very cool. Um, particularly the full you know, with that twist of, like, madness, um, you know, you don't often see that. Is The fool generally in Rider Waite Smith is, like, blind optimism, foolish optimism, naivety, not madness, you know, not generally, anyway. Um, but it was cool to see, I mean, you know. So, but, um, yeah, so that's really, really cool. And um, I don't think you'll need links. I mean, I can leave links down below, but if you are interested in this, uh, you can just get this through either Llewellyn or Los Carabeo uh, or on Amazon. You know. mm -hmm. This was another cool one. So the Steampunk Art Nouveau. Um, I have a lot of the Art Nouveau decks. I like Art Nouveau style. I love... Taramuka was one of my first that You know, it was like, I think like maybe my third deck ever, the Taramuka, because I really like that Art Nouveau style. But this is combined art nouveau with steampunk most of you probably know what the steampunk is but uh you'll see it throughout the deck and just same type of quality uh in this um cardstock is very nice these are the backs they slide and shuffle really nicely particularly riffle shuffling um yeah i mean really really cool let's take a look at the book really quickly um, and this is very Rider Waite Smith, also. Um, but it, you know, you find some interesting stuff in here. It's uh, it's not exactly a you know a clone or something like. There's value from these kind of decks. Samuel Cuddle is a wayward gent who travels with his rusty steam powered pup. Yeah, it gives you a bit of history on Art Nouveau and steampunk, but not too much, you know, just a little bit, uh, and then it gets right into the majors. That's pretty much typical of the um, Los Carabeo books. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, this is something that wouldn't require that much research. You know, like the Templar deck might help to know a little bit um, and pick up on the references and stuff. But, um, you know, I'll just do it the way I did before here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, very, very cool. Yeah, it's an interesting combination. I mean, it's, they seem to go together pretty well. Um, but it's a fun little deck. I, mean, I really like this. Okay, the Hermit. There's the, um, the wheel. Cool hangman. So, yeah, I mean, if you like this kind of thing, it might be something that you you would be drawn to. I really like it. I mean, it's a fun deck. Um, I'm not as excited about it as I am with the Templar deck, I'll be honest with you. But I do like this one, and I'll probably grab it to read with um, every now and then. Judgment and the world. I mean, yeah, very Rider Wade Smith. Okay, these are the pips here. Very cool.
full ace of wands. Mm. Well, oh, I like the blue and the swords and the cups. It's really uh, stands out and very, very nice. Yeah, so I mean, it's not a bad deck, you know. Um, very Rider Waite Smith, clearly. Um, you know, if you're just look, if you like the art style, I would say if it's something that you like in terms of the art style, uh, and you're familiar with RWS and like the system, it might be for you. Um, but yeah, it's a steampunk art nouveau. The last thing I want to show you is the book that they sent me, which is really a cool, um, book. So this is something that I've been reading. I've been picking it up like on and off for for weeks now it's by jenna matlin it's called will you give me a reading uh i really like this book and this is perfect example why i love uh llewellyn books because they just put out really good material um this is all about reading the cards it's not an intro introductory book in per se it focuses specifically on giving other people readings. Um, the forward is by Benabel Wen, uh, who has like just glowing things to say about this book, uh, and for good reason. Um, so yes, yeah, the forward by Benabel, which is really nice. I mean, you know, Benabel is somebody who's very respected uh, in the community. So, but yeah, I mean, just gives you like goes with some of the basics, but gives you a lot of like practical advice don't panic listen you are probably not a mind reader it's just like it goes over that um all of these kind of cool little rules to think of you know especially if you need the guidance like if you have trouble reading for other people this is probably a good book for you um touchstone tarot act and then there's yeah there's all kinds of activities um let's see what else is in here yeah, talking about time, Tarot 101, 101 for Rebels. Talks about psychic impression. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool practical advice in here as well for, for, for um, you know, and it goes through actual readings and tells you, you know, uh, tricks and tips. So, you know, but uh, very, very cool book reverse engineer reading judgment is a card not a reading spell hmm. really cool anyway uh that's uh jenna matlin so i you know i haven't read it thoroughly i just read uh I've been picking it up here and there, you know, reading bits and pieces of it, but I need to uh, really read it uh, through and through. But there's a lot of really good advice in here. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you as always. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, everybody, love and peace. Bye-bye.